She chose God as her best friend when growing up. Now, part of the Bride of Christ and commissioned by the Father, Minister Charmaine Noel carries the good news of the Gospel to all the lands. Minister Noel and the Ministry for Anointed Prophecy, MAP, welcomes you on the Highway of Holiness. God told Minister Charmaine Noel to prophesy into the lives of the people so that they may be carriers of His glory and walk in the supernatural with mighty miracles, signs and wonders following. Hello everyone and welcome to our program Highway of Holiness where you know it is a pleasure to be in your company to speak the very heart and mind of God to you wonderful people. Well, I'm going to begin today with a scripture uh, taken from Proverbs. I just want to read one verse for you. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 13. And it says, Even in laughter the heart may sorrow, and the end of mirth may be grief. Well, today God is going to continue on a two-part series that I began last week. Last week, if you had tuned in, you would have heard me speak about energy in space. And I began to explain to, to you wonderful people that there is something that the Holy Spirit is doing right now with His church, with His people. And He is creating space around us. What, is, what do I mean by that? Well, God is allowing people to be uprooted in our lives and, and people to be removed from our lives. God is allowing uh, even jobs that we would have, that those jobs to be removed. God is allowing space in our lives. And the reason He's allowing that space in our lives is so that his energy can be released what do I mean by that well you know even in the natural you know the word the word energy comes out of a two part two parts it means potential and it and it means kinetic and potential means that which is stored and kinetic speaks of movement and God is speaking to us right now and he says if you want faith to increase in your life because the Spirit of the Lord said to me he says many of my people have been crying out for faith oh, father give me faith I need faith just to believe to believe your word to believe the whatever you know you have promised me for these things to come to pass some of you have sickness in your body and you need faith to believe that you can be healed some of you have a financial situation and, and you want faith to believe that you can just get a breakthrough from, from you know, the, the finances that, that, you, that you need even to just live, some of you. And, and God is saying to us, do you want faith to increase in your life? Do you want that measure of faith to increase in your life? What will it take? Well, the first point that it will take is the fact that God says, I'm going to create space around you. And as I create space around you, understand that there is something that comes along with that space that you must know in order for faith, for the measure of faith to increase in you. You see, precious ones, there is something that God wants us to all know. He's calling on us all to ascend. We're all, we're all to climb on our spiritual Mount Zion. Everything in our lives, it's, it's in order for us to, to, to be greater, to be better, to, to be a better Christian, to be a greater Christian to be more understanding, to be more loving, to be more kind. It is called, he is calling on us to ascend on his helix. But here's the point. In order for us to ascend, the measure of faith has to increase in us. How do we conquer the land? How do we conquer the territory called faith? Well, God says, not only am I going to create space around you, but even in creating space, understand that what comes along with it is sorrow. You see, here's what the Lord showed me. God showed me really, he says, you know, as you climb that mountain, just imagine a mountain with trees all around it. He says, as you climb that mountain, I need to clear a pathway for you. And even in clearing that pathway, I'm going to uproot some trees. Because the Spirit of the Lord said to me some months ago, he says, as I did it with Adam, so am I going to do it with you. Even as I planted a garden for Adam to come and to tend and to keep. So too do I plant a garden for every single one of my children. And please understand, what is the Lord speaking about? The garden that he's speaking about are the people in our lives. God literally has planted people in our lives. And the Spirit of the Lord says, even now, I'm going to uproot some people. I'm going to remove some people because it is God who uproots them. Yes, it is God who plants. It 
It is God who builds and it is God who destroys. And he says, I'm going to uproot some people in your lives. And even as I uproot it, I'm going to clear a pathway so that you could climb on this mountain and ascend, my goodness, in the on, onto Mount Zion as I have called you to. And here's what he says. He says, as I uproot people, as I remove people from your life, understand there will be great sorrow. Sorrow will come upon you. You see, what has happened to the church of Jesus Christ? We have come to a place where there's so much laughter. Yeah, we, we have laughter. We have fun. We, we, you know, we have programs in our church. We have, you know, we have many fellowship times and, and you know, there's a lot of food, you know, food and drink and, and we have, we have a merry time. And even in the merry time, there is, there is no real sorrow. God says, I'm calling my church into another season of fluid intercession. You see, what is fluid intercession. Fluid intercession is like liquid prayer. Fluid intercession is weeping and sorrow and, and, and sadness and tears. God is calling the church in a season where he wants us to, to weep and mourn for our brothers and sisters who are hurting and we are not. You see, many of us, we have things going so good for us. Or we're comfortable or we're just concerned in our own sphere and we and we don't understand that there is so much more uh, that God is calling us into and what is the Lord saying he is saying even in the midst of laughter because the laughter is not going to cause you to increase your faith he says so I'm bringing you into a season every remember remember as a prophet of the Lord I'm going to speak in the now he says I'm bringing you into a season of sorrow what does that mean? Because understand, even as, as, as God begins to remove and uh, as he begins to create deforestation without reforestation, as he removes the trees and there is deforestation, along with deforestation, there are landslides and there, and there is great erosion. And so there, there's going to be some things in our lives that is going to be up, upheaval. Along with deforestation, it, it also creates, uh, you know, something where the, where the sun's rays comes directly and hits the earth because the trees the canopy of trees does, does not protect the, the the moisture of the soil and what happens there is something called the wind through and what 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 happens uh, precious ones it creates two things it creates the winds begin to blow because the trees are not there to protect the the, the other trees that are there and so because some trees are being uprooted the wind blows the trees that remained and the land and the soil begins to get dry and so we find in the season of sorrow that there is a much dryness even in our prayer life we find that that even the few trees in our garden that remain trees speaking of people of course even the few people who are around us they are swaying they are swaying instead of standing firm and being you know pillars around us and so God is saying understand that I am calling you into a season of sorrow. Be the reason I'm calling you into this season is so that faith can increase in you. You know what, ha what happens to us many times? Many times we use the people around us as props. And so our parents become our props. Our children become our props. Our spouses become, our, even our very church become our props. And so what happens is we, so, we are so dependent on man. We place so much confidence on man that we don't bother to go before God. God and really trust God when we are faced with a dire situation. We, we, we call someone, oh, can you help me? I need a financial, I need a financial, you know, I have a financial situation. Can you help me? And so we call on man. We call on our brother. We call on our sister. We call on people around us in the plants and the trees in our garden instead of re relying on God. And so faith is not increased. The measure of faith is not increased. So here's what God says. He says, I'm creating space. I'm removing the people. So that which is stored in you, which is the very word of God, I'm going to cause movement to take place because faith is the... Now, please hear understand. Here's what the word of God says. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. You see, we have to understand faith speaks not of now. Faith speaks of that which is yet to come. You see, many people speak of faith being now. You know, that, that, that would now 
could be earned, it could be bought. But what it is actually saying is that faith is what is yet to happen. And what is yet to happen, there is something called a substance that has to be released. What is the substance? The substance is the very catalyst. Another word for substance is a catalyst. It is the catalyst or the spark to ignite the movement, kinetic energy, movement to take place in our space around us so that the, the, the very faith can be activated and come that which is of the future and bring it into the now. God says, I'm going to cause faith to increasing you by creating space and by bringing you into a season of sorrow because when people are removed around us when jobs are removed around us come on when things begin to change sorrow comes upon us and you know there, there was a, there was a, let me read the scripture again because it says in proverbs 14 13 let me read it again we got to hear it again it says even in laughter the heart may sorrow and the end of mirth you know may be grief and, and so the end of gladness at the end of this happy time that we are having you know many of us have these you know tea parties and all of that in church and at the end of all of that he says he says what is better for us and he says what is better for you if you want faith to increase in your life what is better for you is for sorrow to come what is sorrow Sp sorrow speaks of pain what is pain pain can be emotional pain pain can be physical pain God says there is a season and please understand this is not forever he says there is a season I'm taking you into in order for faith to increase and that's only for those who have asked for faith if you have asked God father increase my faith that I may believe for things in my life he says this is what I'm going to I'm going to allow to happen to you you know there was a man a king called Belchus. I don't know how many of you remember him, you know, in, in the Bible, in Daniel chapter 5. And, and this king, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 5, verse 1, that Belchus, the king, made a great feast for a thousand of his lords, and he drank wine in the presence of a thousand. And, and you know, the Bible went on to say, while he tasted the wine, Belchus gave the command to bring gold and silver vessels, which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple, which had been in Jerusalem, that the king of his lords, and his wives and his concubines may drink from them. Look at me a minute. They, what he was doing, he was making merry and making mockery of the very things that were holy in the temple of the Lord. What happens to us many times is we, we find ourselves making mockery of things that are holy in the presence of the Lord because we, we just want laughter. We want so. How many of you want laughter? I think everybody will put their hand up here. Yes, please, prophet. We want laughter. But please understand there is a time for joy and there is a time for sorrow. And God says the time right now in order for faith to increase increase in you is that sorrow come upon you um, stay tuned precious ones because there is a much more that i have to speak to you about in in bringing the revelation and the now word of the lord so that you can increase your faith uh, and you can ascend onto the mount zion the spiritual mount zion that he that he wants all of us to enter into stay tuned i will be right back get your copy of today's message email us Info at maptt.org. That's info at maptt.org. Or write to us, the Ministry for Anointed Prophecy, we MAP, P.O. Box 6057, Diego Martin, Trinidad, West Indies. You can listen to many of Minister Charmaine's messages or watch her on YouTube when you visit the website www.maptt.org. Messages such as Carriers of His Glory, a four part series spiritual gravity, the power of faith, and resurrection power. Be sure to watch the program Highway of Holiness on TV6 every 1st, 3rd, and 5th Sunday at 7 a.m. Check your local listings and tune in to this station as MAP brings more words and messages about the power and glory of God on the Highway of Holiness. Welcome back, precious ones. 
Well, I know you are excited. You're excited because you really want to be in God's perfect will. I know this word uh, seems to be one that is, that is a difficult one to swallow. But God says to us right now, he says, do you want your faith to increase? Understand, in increasing faith, some of us have never heard a, a, a word like this when it speaks about faith. Uh, but God says, if you want faith to increase in your life, God says, I'm going to create an open space around you. And in creating that open space, it will cause you to come to a place of aloneness. In coming to that place of aloneness, I'm going to remove some trees in your life. I'm going to uproot some people that have been there, some jobs, some situations that have been there that have kept you comfortable and have you, uh, you know, with a lot of laughter. God says, I'm going to do this because I want faith to increase in you. And, you know, when we look at the story, as I was, as, as I was speaking to you before concerning Daniel, Daniel chapter 5, concerning this king, uh, Belshazzar, he was having fun he was just making merry and the bible says in in verse 5 of chapter 5 the bible says in the same hour the fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite uh, the lampstand my goodness on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace and you see you see precious ones they were what what god was doing is god was giving king belshazzar a warning he was giving a, a warning and of course the king you know he called all his soothsayers to come and read it and of course they weren't able to to read it and the king's wife knew of Daniel my goodness he knew Dan she knew Daniel was able to interpret and please understand out of the interpretation it meant that Belshazzar was going to lose his very kingdom to the Medes and Persians now now precious ones he went immediately in one day from laughter into sorrow in one day it went he went into sorrow now here's the thing here's the thing if we don't learn a lesson when God is taking us into a season of sorrow, it can bring utter destruction to, to those around us. You see, God is telling us right now, the Spirit of the Lord says, He says, I'm calling on you to enter into a season. Please understand, because the very nature and character of God is revealed even in times and seasons. And He says, this is a season I'm taking you into. I want to read a scripture for you because we've got to understand what the Lord is really saying to us right now. In Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse to here's what it says I said of laughter of course this is Solomon he says I said of laughter madness and of mirth and, and the word mirth is, is a simcha in the Hebrew and it means gladness come on it, it means happiness it means pleasure he says and of mirth what does it accomplish and so the word of Lord is saying he's saying he said what is laughter laughter is just madness uh, you know and what is what is mirth what is what is this happiness that you're talking about he says what does it accomplish because if we find ourselves always laughing and things going on our way if everything is happening good for us where is faith going to increase in our lives without faith the bible says that it's impossible to please god god is calling us into a season where he wants faith to increase in us and he says he says he says in order for that to happen you have got to find yourself alone and you've got to find yourself in a season of weeping and mourning, of fluid intercession. My goodness, I know, I know it sounds heavy, but, but prophet, oh, come on, prophet, I want to be happy. Yes, we all want to be happy, but what is the difference between being happy and having the joy of the Lord? You see, the joy of the Lord is what gives us strength. Where do we get our strength from? You see, the, the, what we have to understand, precious ones, the very, the very word joy, even in the Greek, uh, speaks of something. Uh, that releases grace grace speaks of the very power of God being released in our lives that's what it is it's not just unmerited favor the very word the very word grace really means the power of God being released in our lives the very kinetic energy of God being released in our lives that brings a movement we have to understand faith releases movement in our lives in other words we see things actually happening how many of you have been praying for things but you're not seeing it happening you see God is taking us into a place where he's causing us to come to an emptiness we are we are being empty that he may fill us you see some of us are so full oh my god I'm gonna go here some of us are so full with ourselves we are so filled up with ourselves we are so puffed up uh, that, that God can God cannot bring anything he can the word of God can't even come inside of us because we're just so we're just so puffed up my goodness and the spirit of the Lord is speaking today and and you see he says here's here's the thing that you have to understand even in reading the scriptures 
and understanding the word of God. The very word laughter, the very word laughter is written seven times, you know, in the King James Version. It's seven times. Do you know, precious ones, six out of the seven times, it speaks of that which is negative. It doesn't say laughter is this really, really good thing and God wants everybody to have laughter. No, no. As a matter of fact, there, are only, there is only one instance. Every other time the word laughter is used, whether it is in the Hebrew or whether it is in the Greek, uh, every time, other time that it's used, it was used as a negative. In other words, it does not cause us to ascend onto the mountain of God. It does not bring us into a place where we become, you know, as, as people to, to have increased faith. The measure of faith is not increased. There's a scripture I want to read for you. It is important for you to understand really what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us today. And, it, and I'm going into the New Testament right now. And it is in the, in the book of James chapter 4 verse 9. And, and let me just go back a little bit in verse 8 so that we can understand really what the Spirit of the Lord is, is speaking to us about. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Now look at me before I go any further. That sounds really, really good. The Spirit of the Lord says, draw near to him, and he's going to draw near to us. And you say, well, 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 that's really good. But many of us have not finished the sentence. When we read that, we don't finish the entire sentence. Because when we read the entire verse, it says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. You see, the word of the Lord, my God, my God, don't, don't we just love the word of the Lord? You see, God is telling us in order for us to draw near to him, uh, for him to draw near to us, there has got to be a cleansing, there has got to be a purifier, because many of us are double-minded. Many of us, we pretend to have this holy life, or we live as though we love everybody, but when one person comes up against us or so we begin to hate that person you we have to understand God says we are to love all including our very enemies and so he comes now and then he says in verse 9 lament and mourn and weep let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy uh, to gloom. He says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Now you have to understand what God is saying. Here. He says, lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Why would the Lord say that? Why would, why would James make such a statement? That doesn't sound very encouraging. You see, the reason why he would say that is because many of us need to humble ourselves. Listen to me, I'm gonna bring one more verse and you're gonna be shocked by what I'm gonna say here. Unless we understand that in order for us to have a heart of humility, in order for us to have a heart of compassion, in order for us to have the heart of love, God says there is a time, there is a season we must go through, and it is the season of sorrow. The word sorrow in the Hebrew means pain. It means emotional pain, and sometimes it can mean physical pain. We have got to experience pain pain. My God, you got to understand what I'm saying. And so let me turn to the, to, to what the, what the, what the scripture is really saying in English. What, what is Solomon really saying? Because in Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse three, this is what he says. He says, sorrow is better than laughter for by a sad countenance, the heart is made better. Oh my goodness. Yes. Precious ones. It comes down to the heart. You see, God is not interested in what we do outwardly. He's not interested in how many times you come to church or he's not interested in, 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 in how well you can pray or how many times you can lay hands on somebody. He, he's, not, he's not interested in how well you think you're doing good. You, you go and you give a, a poor person some money or you feed the poor. He's not interested in that because our good works is like filthy rags unto him. Because many times we, we, we take that which is good and we, and we receive it for ourselves and not give glory to God. Here's what he's saying to us. The Lord is saying to us, my God, he says, By, for a sad countenance uh, of the heart is made better when sorrow, oh my goodness, when sorrow is better than laughter. He says sorrow becomes better than laughter. So, so saints, here's what he's saying to 
us. Please listen. This is a season. He says, I'm taking you into a season where I'm going to remove trees around you in your garden. I'm going to uproot some trees that have caused you before to tend and keep. Yeah, you're supposed to take care of some people, but I'm going to uproot, the, uproot them. I'm going to remove people out of your life. And I'm going to remove because I want you to have space around you. Uh, that the potential energy, my goodness, that which was stored inside of you, which is my word, will release kinetic energy, will we begin movement, and faith will increase in you so that sorrow can come. When sorrow comes, it is in the midst of sorrow, out of laughter, that faith increases, that the heart becomes, uh, changes and transforms from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. The Spirit of the Lord says, I create space around you for laughter to be replaced with sorrow that joy may fill your soul you see god says at the end of it he wants his joy his joy not 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 our not our earthly laughter he says he wants his joy to come inside of you because it is his joy haris it is his joy that releases grace. It is his joy that releases strength. He says, you need strength. He says, you need grace. You need my joy. But in order for that to happen, I have first got to create space and I have to bring you into a season of sorrow. Do not be sad when people begin to move from your life. He says, don't, don't worry about it because all I am doing is that I'm increasing your faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, Thank you for this word. Increase their faith, Father, that they may believe in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you, precious one. Go on the Facebook. Go and like us on Facebook, Shami Noel, uh, on, on Twitter, and you know all, all of all of the social media. You you follow us on Instagram. Come on, you you guys got to go on YouTube. Just follow us because the Spirit of the Lord is speaking in this season. My goodness, and I want to say right now in the name of Jesus, be healed. Come on, lift your hands. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Christ right now let me close by saying I love you with the love of Jesus much more importantly Jesus loves you God bless get your copy of today's message email us info at maptt.org that's info at maptt.org or write to us the ministry for anointed prophecy MAP PO box 6057 Diego Martin Trinidad West Indies you can listen to many of Minister Charmaine's messages or watch her on YouTube when you visit the website www.maptt.org. Messages such as Carriers of His Glory, a four-part series, Spiritual Gravity, The Power of Faith, and Resurrection Power. Be sure to watch the program Highway of Holiness on TV6 every first, third, and fifth Sunday at 7 a.m. Check your local listings and tune in to this station as MAP brings more words and messages about the power and glory of God on the Highway of Holiness.